Hello, Robert Pajot from the National Trust for Canada. Welcome to this, the second episode of our vlog on the restoration of the Papineau Memorial Chapel in Montebello, Quebec. But today I'm actually in Gatineau, uh, Quebec, uh, at the site and uh, the workshops of our main contractor, uh, Larry Construction, uh, who is not only our general contractor, but is also the masonry contractor and expert in conservation of masonry. So I'm here today because uh, this episode will be focused on the masonry conservation of our project. We are very fortunate that the masonry is overall in very good condition and despite being 150 years old, we do know that in the 1930s the chapel underwent a major renovation project that included the pouring of a new concrete foundation and the replacement of the roof. But what really isn't clear is whether the masonry uh, walls had been entirely rebuilt at that time or not. So I asked Jonathan Ebad, a project manager and vice president of Larry Construction, if they had found any signs of the, any original mortar in their work so far. I think in certain areas uh, we did find that there was a little bit more uh, lime in the cement, so mm -hmm. it was a little softer to remove, but there were some other areas like at the uh, uh, lower levels of the chapel that were very, very hard. You can tell there was a lot of very Portland heavy cement yeah. in the cement. Amazing. Yeah, because even in the bell tower, from what I was able to see, it looks really hard. Um, so it, it may have been rebuilt in the 1930s. Yeah, um, could have. Yeah, the ideology then was uh, stronger the mortar, the better. Yeah, which is kind of remarkable that the chapel is still uh, with such a hard mortar. The stone hasn't shown a lot of damage. Uh, it, uh, it's a testament to the stone, I guess, that it was able to. The, yeah. the that type of so the Saint Canute is, for a sandstone is really quite hard. I, I think so. Yes. Yeah. The Saint Canute sandstone is an important element of the the chapel's heritage character. Its rich ca color variation and and its texture, coupled with the coursing pattern, how it's uh, how it was laid in the wall, really contribute to the character of the chapel. Only some sporadic. Repointing is taking place as part of the project. Um, overall, the, ma the, ma the masonry is in good condition, as is the mortar. Uh, just in a few places, the mortar had failed. So here you can see um, the, the joints have been cut out, and even the back pointing is now in place, waiting for its final repointing, which would happen in the next few days. When planning this project, some concern had been raised about the potential poor condition of the roof's small bell tower. But now that we have access to the tower, we happily found that it is structurally sound, requiring only a replacement of one stone and some repointing. The largest stone we're going to be replacing as part of the project is the sill, the large stone sill, right at the entranceway of the doors uh, of the chapel. Um, this stone has been replaced in pieces over the years, so we will be reintegrating or reinstalling the single large flagstone. As you can see here, it's just getting uh, just getting prepared um, and we're being ready for installation in the next few weeks. The seven or eight stones that will be replaced as part of our project are now being prepared using a technique that's been around since the Egyptians first built the pyramids, the, the plug and feather technique. As you can see here, the, a larger piece of stone has been scored along the line where the mason wants the stone to break. And then he drills a series of holes along that line. The mason then places three pieces of metal into each hole. First, there are the two feathers, the pieces of metal with a curved top that allows them to sit and stay at the surface of the block of stone. And then the third piece, the wedge that goes between the two. Once all the holes are filled with their plugs and feathers, the mason then taps on those wedges to put an even pressure along that break line relying on the sound that the, the wedge makes to ensure an even pressure. It's that even pressure that causes the block of stone to break cleanly along that line. Nice. Pretty impressive. The stone is then cut to size and its surface is chiseled to have the right texture so that it matches the chapel's original stones. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this stone is going to look at the chapel and that work will be taking place in the next few weeks. 
Now, I mentioned earlier that the masonry is overall a small portion of our project, but it is a critical one because it had to be completed before the other project elements were, were uh, undertaken. So namely the roof, the replacement of the copper roof, and the subject of my next vlog, which was, is the conservation of the chapel's wooden elements. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, I'll be visiting the workshops where the wooden cross, the doors and the windows of the chapel are being worked on. So uh, thanks for listening and uh, we will see you again soon.